lounge and sun. All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan, and back with me again, I got one of my favorite writers in the biz. I got Mr. Joe Casey with me. Very excited to have you back on. It's been a while. Uh, the Dutch miniseries that's been coming out has been fucking awesome. And the reason we're here to talk is Blood Squad 7, which you told me about off the record. I, I, I'm i thinking it's been about a year. I yeah. Maybe give or take. Um, so yeah. I am so excited to finally be able to talk with you about it. I read the first two issues that you sent me, which, by the way, thank you for sending those to me. Uh, I can't wait to read them in uh, physical form, but they were awesome. And uh, I just... Can't wait to talk to you about this book, man. Let's do it, man. This is a, the time has come. Yes. So first off, I know you wrote a big editorial in the back, but I'm not even gonna like pick that apart yet. Um, but <laughs> why this book? It makes sense to me why you're writing this book. Why now? What was the decision behind uh doing this title? Well, when we did the Dutch story in the image anthology, to make it work with the new unfortunate legal situation with young blood that somebody else owns it it's not part of image comics anymore that we had to fill in all the backstory to make the dutch story in the present have some resonance have some uh gravitas and it not just seem completely like we were ignoring his history for legal purposes so i had to come up with this whole blood squad seven thing to replace the young blood hole that was left once i did that i had all this material i was really digging on it because there's a few other characters that were not owned by Rob that we had access to. Infinity, Ripcord, Enigma. They're, they're, those are all old characters that Eric Stevenson and his uh, collaborators owned. Mm -hmm. So we had the, the, the foundation of, of this concept. And I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, it's been, a, it's been a while since that image shared universe that the founders came up with was a thing. I mean... It was really tight in the beginning. And then after about uh, two, three years, everybody kind of split off and went in their own directions. And then people would leave the company and people would get kicked out of the company and come back and whatever happened. That shared universe concept was never really uh, addressed again, you know, and, and not in that way. And I feel like <clears throat> there was a whole generation of, of readers who really invested in that continuity and really were into it. That was their shared universe. Maybe the first one that they saw from the ground up and i just had this notion that well maybe those those readers are still out there and and would like to revisit that at 30 years later so that's that's kind of where the whole idea started and then from there it was just a snowball effect of oh and this could happen and we could do this and we could do these flashbacks and we could you know just really dive into the concept because it's not i mean as you've seen now it's not a 90s throwback comic it's not a pastiche. It's not a, we're not trying to recreate some extreme comic from, from 1993. It takes place in 2024. It's got modern sensibility. It's a mature reader's comic. It just uses the history of image comics, the, the shared universe as its backstory in the same way that when Stan and Jack and, and Ditko came up with the Marvel universe in the sixties, they eventually used the golden age as their history. It's the same same basic concept here. It's interesting. You know, I didn't think about it that way. That you're right. They use the Golden Age stuff as the history to make it precede uh, the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I, didn't, I never really connected those. Obviously, I knew, but just didn't connect those dots. I love the Image Universe. Unabashedly, I love all the 90s stuff. You know, I have a ton of it. I bought a ton of it during COVID. Whatever things I couldn't afford when I was a little kid. Yeah, right. And I've been filling in runs, whether it's Young Blood, Blood Strike, all all the extreme stuff. You know, the Cyber Force, Savage Savage Dragons, probably um, my favorite of of all of them. But you know, Spawn, all that good stuff. So to see you doing this and like, yeah, you're right. It, it's not a '90s throwback. You are honoring. I mean, you. There was a. I think it was it. Yeah, it was it issue one, right? Issue one with the with the action figures, and yeah. you call out Todd's toys. I love. Oh, yeah. I love that dude. That was awesome. That's yeah. like a deep cut. Not everybody who necessarily would know what that is, but for the people that grew up in the nineties, you know, like that was a nice little thing you threw out there for them. Yeah. There's a lot of Easter eggs. There's a lot. I mean, cause as a writer, I just love doing that because it's fun. It informs the world. It, it, not that it weeds out the, 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 uh, certain readers, but it, I mean, I want readers like you who were there and remember that stuff to know that 
I got my eye on you. We're going to honor that stuff. It means something. It was not just three or four years of throwaway comics. Now we're going to treat it with the perspective and 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 the and the gravitas it deserves because it's history now. So how are you, like you said, some of the characters, obviously Dutch, Infinity, you know, Ripcord, you're able to use that, those characters. So you can weave those in. So there are, are not everything is completely being reworked. How are you kind of juggling that and like coming up with, you know, the analogs, so to speak, of the original members of Youngblood? That's that's part of filling in the history of, of the of the Blood Squad 7 concept. As it goes on, I mean, you see in, there's the flashback in issue number two. Two is dope, yeah. To, to Dragon number three, where Dragon fights, you know, Bad Rock from Youngblood. Mm -hmm. Well, in our version, it's Blockhead from Blood Squad 7. Those and you see, there's you know, Tachi and uh, and uh, Man of War. Those those are the easy analogies to to make because you see them in the scene. But it, it it goes pretty deep. There's a whole lineup of Blood Squad Seven from 1992 that if you looked at them, for the most part, I think people could pick out who's who or who's mm -hmm. who's supposed to be who. But, I, but we treat it like this, you know, when when uh, and not to compare ourselves with this masterpiece. But most people know that Watchmen was based originally on the Charlton characters from mm -hmm. the 60s. Uh, Captain Adam, Blue Beetle, uh, The Question, Peacemaker, Nightshade. And they transformed into Dr. Manhattan, Rorschach, The Comedian, Night Owl, et cetera. I feel like we're, we've, we've basically done that riff, but instead of using the Charlton heroes as a template, we used Youngblood as a template. So to me, it's it's kind of fun because... I've written Young Blood before. I have a lot of fondness for that concept and those characters. This is right now, in a way, the only way that you're going to get even a version of those characters with the legal situation the way it is. We want to make sure that even the analogous characters feel legit. You know, they're they're not just it's not a gag. There there's three dimensional as any other characters that are in the book. It's just that they had their heyday 30 years ago. You know, the infinity, the infinity that's in the new Blood Squad 7 is the daughter of the original one. And uh, Ripcord is is several generations down in terms of the program. It's it's a whole thing. I just took it very seriously, you know, and just tried to use some logic, some, you know, I mean, that's the fun part about shared universe concepts is, you know, there's a lot of material there to mine. It's a lot of, um, it's a lot of um, scaffolding that you can explore and, and it holds up the, the the main the main building as you're building it. There'll be more flashbacks going forward. There's, I mean, Youngblood luckily showed up in a lot of early image comics. They showed up in Savage Dragon, in Wildcats, in Shadowhawk, you know, uh, so in Spawn. So you're gonna see a lot of uh, those same kind of flashbacks that we put in issue two going forward. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm stoked for that. I mean, how, first of all, have you talked to any of the, I would imagine you have talked to the original creators because you have, I'm sure you have to ask permission still to use like dragon yeah. and stuff and so like that. Yeah. Um, so are you, I mean, first of all, I mean, the obvious ones for me to ask are Chapel is tied to Spawn, but Chapel has been rewritten out, right? Is there something yeah. you're going to touch on with that? Um, and then you mentioned Wildcats. They also are not part of Image anymore. So they had to be rewritten out. Are you doing... I mean, maybe this is too spoilery. Are you doing your own version of Wildcats too? No, well, in the case of the Wildcats flashback scene, we're just very clever with the shots that we pick. Okay. You know, again, it's you you gotta you gotta sort of dance between the raindrops on some of these things. Mm -hmm. And um, like with the chapel bit, you'll see in the in the flashback in issue three who the chapel character is in that scenario. Mm -hmm. Because he's right there in the scene, you know, where Chapel once was now is this character. Right. So I try to, you know, we try to be clever about it, not in a clever, clever kind of way, but we just, we're, 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 we're doling out that information. And for people who are in the know, who read those earlier comics, it, it'll be pretty obvious to you who's supposed to be who and, and what's going on when, like, yeah, we, we can't show the Wildcats on panel. Mm hmm but we can allude to what's going on in the scene and we can show the, the blood squad seven characters and, and the dialogue's the same. And, you know, so it, it, it all, 
works out ultimately in the end, at least with that scene. How much of the first of all, have you talked to does Rob know about any of this? Have you talked to Rob about your idea behind this or no? I tried to talk to Rob. Rob's sometimes hard to get a hold of. Okay. But he knows about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I mean, like I said, I've I've written Young Blood in the past. I did right. write on Young Blood like the 2008, 2009, and I re-dialogued the first four issues for Rob. He knows I love that concept and he knows I would never do anything to dishonor it or you know i'm not making fun of it i, I mean I, I think it's a genius concept i love it yeah way, way ahead of its time that's what i was going to say you you mentioned that in your in the back of the of issue one that how it's ahead of its time how are you like using that concept of like what they were doing like being celebrities and stuff and out there how are you flipping that concept on its side and and doing your version of blood squad seven well the concept of celebrity in general is a whole different beast now you know, mm -hmm. I mean, there are, you know, TikTok celebrities. I wouldn't know them if you put a gun to my head, but my kids know about them, you know. So that it's not like it was in the early 90s where you could just, you know, be on MTV, be on, in People magazine, be in Rolling Stone magazine or whatever. The outlets were fairly obvious if you were going to present yourself as a celebrity. Now it's a lot more, it's sort of, the mechanism is ambiguous. So who is and who isn't a celebrity and the expectations of celebrity are, are way different. And, you know, as you've seen the first two issues, we kind of touch on that. One of the characters is sort of anticipating this onslaught of fame, but is a little too into it, maybe a little too um, fixated on it. And he's not quite ready to handle it, but he thinks he can, as everybody does, especially when you're younger and you think, oh man, it'd be great to be famous because I could do whatever I want. And you know, you have all these expectations. So we'll be exploring that pretty heavily. You know, the, the social, not the social media aspect will not be, it won't be like, we won't lean on it too much, but just the, the difference in celebrity culture is something we definitely will touch upon. Because you've seen issue one, there's the action figure commercial, which is yeah. from the 90s. And it's kind of quaint and kind of like, oh, look at that. It's it's definitely nostalgic. Mm -hmm. But in that in that meeting that, that 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 they show that video, they're not talking about new action figures. They're talking about what is the new ways to do this? How are we going to roll this out in a way that's resonant and establishes the brand again and, and does what we need it to do? So I mean, asking exploring those questions, it's a bit, it's sort of a callback to what I did on Wildcats, which was to, you know, when I took that corporate uh, superhero thing and tried to take it to a its logical extent or maybe illogical extent, but I pushed it as far as I could. Mm -hmm. We'll do that with the celebrity aspect in this in this book. Yeah, you're like, love your Wildcats run. I love that take on on the character. And it's cool to see like, you know, you take, like you say, you take it to the next level. So you're doing it with, you know, quote unquote, the young blood concept with Blood Squad 7. But it's, it's just cool to see. I love the connectivity of the image universe and i feel like we're seeing sprinkles of it now like where spawn and dragon were in uh philadelphia but it's like still kind of its own thing you know um it's something that i miss and so to see this and then like when i when i looked into issue two and saw that opening page and i was just like oh my god i remember that comic i love that comic <laughs> i've read it so many times so like i already i didn't even need to read the dialogue almost i'm like i know what happens here and so getting to see you like interjected and then the all the ideas that came in my head of like what else you could do obviously like this this can go so much further than just having those flashbacks and reintroducing yeah. right like there's so many avenues you can go moving forward like what are your i guess plans for the book moving past you know just like the um i don't want to say rewriting history but i mean you kind of a little bit are rewriting history it's a little retconning yeah retconning there we go retconning yeah. is the word i was looking for i mean it's sort of there's a balance because i because we want to fill out the backstory in the way that readers of that old material can recognize we want to see where things are now but there's you know things moving forward like you know it's not just Blood Squad Seven that's making a comeback. Their 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 enemies are sort of making a comeback too. It's like, it's like a per, one thing perpetuates the other. Mm -hmm. It's that whole yin yang thing. Well, if the if the superheroes are coming back, then I guess the villains have to come back too. And as you see, also, 
in keeping with sort of the early young bloods, there's a bit of the, there's a kind of a political aspect of the book. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, the the action in the first issue all takes place in Ukraine. So it's I always think it's fun, you know, without again, we don't we we're not we're not trying to make light of those situations, but to interject our fictional characters into those real world situations is something that's going to continue and probably get a little heavier as the book goes on. Cause I it's again, you know, I want to stress to people, this is not a, a gag book. This is, I mean, I, this is a serious sort of modern superhero comic book to, to give it that, that gravitas, that real world feel, we're going to try to interact with the real world as much as possible. So it's, what does a, a, a government sponsored superhero team do in the modern world? What is their, what are their parameters? What's their jurisdiction? What is their mission? So we, 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 we start to see it from the first issue, what the scope of it is, what the kind of things they'll be doing. That'll, that'll sort of grow in the, in the future. And also the great thing about team books for me, the, way, the thing I loved about team books was the interaction of the characters, the characterization. And again, I want to stress to, to, to anybody who's interested in this book, we're really giving these characters lives. We're trying to really dig deep and give them, I mean, the backstory is is part of it, but I'm really kind of been sort of, as I get to know these characters, which you do as a writer when you when you write them, especially when you've created them, mm -hmm. which are all the modern characters, they're all sort of new, even if they're legacy characters, that you get to know them and you get to, you, you dive deep into their, their psyches and their personalities. And so I want readers to take these characters into their hearts. I mean, I, I want them to embrace them as characters and not just as, well, this is a this is a funky, wacky concept and let's see how this plays out. I want people to invest in these characters as much as they did when they were 12 years old and first reading Spawn and Dragon and Youngblood and Cyberforce and the way they invested there. I want to invest here and I, and I, I want to pay off that investment as much as possible, you know. Yeah, I think it's dope. I mean, just the possibilities of what you could do, like kind of reinvigorating a connected uh, image universe, like with some of the modern day versions of like, you know, there's the modern day version of Shadowhawk or you got Malcolm Dragon, like the possibilities of that happening too are really exciting. Because like, again, like as much as I love image books as they are when they're separate, I do, I do kind of wish for that, those days of when they were connected, you'd see Spawn more more frequently in the other books or dragon would guest star in this book and um i love shadow hawk too like unabashedly i love that character so to speak <laughs> shadow hawk um is something I'm, I'm looking forward to uh one of the characters that stood out to me the most obviously ripcord uh yeah. is a fucking insane character in this yeah. book i won't spoil it for anybody but my god <laughs> like th that's all that was what was interesting to me too is like he's part of this team but like how do you allow the behavior you know what i mean like the behavior to a certain extent you know because he is i mean i don't i don't want to spoil it but yeah, doing what he's doing and then how do you ex kind of accept that as like part of the team you know well it's i mean the, the short answer is i can say this without spoiling you don't mm -hmm. things things the first story arc is all about that situation and that situation coming to a head um because it's a bad scene when you've got when you're trying to do this thing i mean i guess we could say not everybody's on board in the right way mm -hmm. with, the, with what's, what's, what's about to happen. Yeah. And there might be, they maybe somebody missed a psychological profile somewhere, you know, and that not everybody can handle the lifestyle. And some people react in ways that are not good for, for a, a major brand relaunch. So dealing with that is sort of the, the that's the main story of the first four issues. And it will be by the by the time we get to issue four, that will have resolved. You know that that will that will all play out probably in the way that you're thinking it will right now, mm -hmm. maybe not. But I mean, it's 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 going to be a problem. They have to take care of it. And how? I mean, I guess. Well, first of all, we haven't even mentioned James Fry, the artist on the book. Um, Paul Fry. Paul Fry. I'm sorry, Paul Fry. How did you? Uh, did you guys connect for the book? Did you? I mean, how does? Because I don't know how that works. I mean, technically, it's kind of licensed characters but it's not licensed right because because everybody you know it, it, i don't know to me it's like it's a weird to wrap my head around it's not technically creator own books but you did create I, it's it's weird it's i don't know no, how to look at it 
You know? I mean, it is a creator owned book in the sense that Paul and I own the Blood Squad 7 concept and, and the characters that we created. Mm -hmm. And the characters that we are borrowing, you just, in the, the great thing about images, as long as you give everybody the credit and point out who owns who and, and what, you know, the copyright trademark situation and get permission, it's good to go. You know, it's how they did it in the beginning. You know, mm -hmm. Paul, I found when I was scouting around for artists to do this book, I knew I wanted to had a certain style that I was looking for. So you kind of, you just cast around who's out there. You know, I, I try to keep my ear to the ground when it comes to new artists. Paul had done some Spider-Man 2099 stuff with uh, a guy, a writer that I, I think we both know, Steve Orlando. Mm -hmm. I've known Steve for 20 years now, I think. So it was easy to go, hey, Steve, you worked with this guy, Paul. He's great. What's his story? And he'd been, he'd been banging around a little bit. I'd done little, little things at DC and this, little things at Marvel. But this is his first sort of ongoing gig. And he was chomping at the bit, man, because he's not, he's sort of a late bloomer. He's more of my generation in terms of age and, and fandom. So he got what, it, what I wanted to do right away. And so we sort of were very simpatico in the kind of book we wanted to do. I mean, I, I think his work speaks for itself. I mean, it's it's really, really cool. It's of a it's of a, a certain uh school. And I just happen to like that school. And I think it it's it sells superheroes in a way that's that leans into the realistic, but is not not totally realistic. I mean, it's not, you know, photorealist, but it it has it has that realistic edge that I think people want out of their modern superheroes right now yeah i think i think he's fantastic um i recognized the name um i could just couldn't remember what book but now you know saying the spider-man 29 now now i realize that that is probably where i saw his work first yeah. um how much of like in terms of story wise because like i i mean i'm assuming he was an image fan too early image so um how much of the collaboration are you guys come up with when, in terms of like creating these like new versions of these old characters and um, who you guys may or may not want to include? Because you don't have to do everything that you know, right. did, but like, how are you picking and choosing all that stuff too? Are you guys doing that together? We did it together in terms of design. I picked characters that I knew could serve story functions. Like, like in issue two, there's that scene where sort of the, the, First Infinity is now the leader of the of the new Blood Squad Seven. It's a character named Erica Richmond, mm -hmm. and there's the scene where Erica is talking to the two alien races that were in Blood Squad Seven in the early '90s, much in the same way that Combat and Photon were part of Young Blood, but they were of warring races that somehow worked together on the team. So those those characters served a function. So of course we needed the analogous versions of those. So that's kind of how we, I picked who we were going to do new versions of. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we left out a couple, but we used quite, I mean, we used quite a few of them. And so with Paul, the collaboration was really just the design process. What, are they, what, what should they look like? How, how recognizable, in, or other words, how close should they be to the original characters that they're based on? And again, it goes back to the, to the Watchmen Charlton thing. Mm -hmm. Look at those two sets of characters. You know who's who. You can pretty much, it's a one-to-one -one kind of thing. Yeah. It's hopefully, it's, for the most part, it's obvious who's who. So we don't have to sort of bend over backwards going, hey, this is, you know, supposed to be so-and-so. You you know it if you know the original characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, yeah, for the most part, it's pretty obvious. Um, But I, I just, I, I really love the fact that you've found a way to bring young blood back without bringing young blood back i just i can't get over it like it's such a great idea i'm super and it, to me it's like you you literally took Watchmen, like you just said watchman and image and you smashed them together and you got your own version of it which i think is brilliant and it is like such a natural progression you know like to take something that was old and bring it back and that was about the same time frame right 30s oh, yeah. like it was like the 50 characters 60s to the 80s and now you're taking the 90s to the 2020s. Yeah. It's oh. weird that we're 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 kind of further away from the from the early image books than than the the um than than the than the golden age was from the silver age. That was mm -hmm. only 20 years. This has been 30 years. 
I, which I can't fucking believe it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It makes me feel old when I when I think about it. So right, but that's but that's why we didn't want to do a pastiche book. We wanted it to be a modern book that just took in all the history. Yeah, because I don't think that even you know you can get away with that for like an issue where it's like oh look it's a cute homage and we're doing it in the style with all the cross hatching and the bombastic storytelling and the you know in, in sometimes the incoherent storytelling mm -hmm. that they sometimes would fall into for good effect but i think if somebody was let's say 12 years old in 1992 and really invested in that those characters and how they interacted and, and, the, and the shared universe concept of it well those those guys are you know 42 years old now so we want to deliver a book that speaks to their sensibilities as opposed to trying to make them feel like they're 12 years old again. Yeah, no, I think it is, it is a, a great way that you balance it, you know, and, um, and it is obviously a great time for it because, you know, nineties nostalgia is super prevalent, I think. Like and, it, yeah. um, you know, and even, like people of my age, a little bit older, obviously, um, that were around for it. Like, like I was saying, like, I couldn't afford to get whatever I wanted back then. That's why during COVID, I went back and bought a bunch of 90s comics, you know? Yeah. And that's why I built in all those gals. And so it is cool to kind of see something in some way feeling like I'm rewarded for loving those comics by getting this new up, updated, you know, take on it and a modern take on it and, and including, you know, past versions. And um, I guess what I want to ask too is, have you thought about like I don't know what your plans are in terms of like long term plans with the book, but you could technically do like a one off, one shot or something set in the nineties, where you not don't recreate the same mission or whatever that Youngblood did. But is that something that you've thought about? Like what are what are like some of the fun things that you kind of have moving forward? I know you said four issue four, so I'm assuming it's gonna be four issue arcs. Pretty much. I mean, what happens? And I'll real quick, I'll lay it out. It's there's the initial four issues. Then we do our version of an annual, which is which we're calling Blood Squad Seven Strike File Number One, which is an oversized story that that get, that really gets into a lot of backstory. There's a there is a um, flashback from the Super Patriot, the first Super Patriot miniseries uh, that Larson and Dave Johnson did back in the day. Great book. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Then we pick up back again with Blood Squad Seven Number Five and go into the next story arc. And then it's just, we just go on from there. It's it's pretty much monthly. We'll take gaps to put out the collections, mm -hmm. put out the strike file issues and stuff. But but the idea is on the business side of it, we want there to be Blood Squad 7 product in the stores reliably every month, whether it's an, a regular issue, a strike file issue, a trade collection or whatever. We want that consistency, you know? So we, we're pretty far ahead. I mean, which is why, you know, I was able to, you got the first two issues, you know. I know, crazy. Yeah. All finished. Yeah. So, uh, but we feel like one thing we've heard retailers complain about is that things are not consistent on their racks. You know, whether it's books that take huge, long years gaps, or they're kind of maybe sick of the miniseries format to some degree because you can't, there's, there's no long-term investment there. It's all short-term stuff. So we're trying to, we've been listening and we're trying to address that by just coming out with a reliable product every month that you can sell to your customers. If you like this thing, here's this month's installment. Well, like I said, whether it's the regular series or strike file or the trade or whatever, it'll be there every month in some capacity. That's a great, so it's not going to be like the early image stuff where there is big gaps in between. Yeah, no, I was just joking. I was, I was a, that was a little <laughs> hanging fruit. Um, but yeah, I love that. I love that idea. I love, I mean, you basically just did exactly what I was hoping you do, which is like these one-offs, but is it, are you going to still have Paul doing the, the strike file or is, okay. So it's. Paul's drawing. So, so far Paul's okay. drawing. it. Okay. That's part of that consistency that we want to get over to the, to the retail community is that reliability has become in short supply these days. Even yeah. the best artists have trouble keeping that monthly schedule because the art is so complex. So the only way to combat that is to try to be way ahead. We've been working on this. I mean, you know, I told you about it quite a while ago. I've mm -hmm. been working on it for months before that. So this started probably, Paul and I started working on this thing probably about, 
a year, a little over a year ago in terms of designing the characters and getting the whole thing together. And he's been drawing ever since. So it's, you know, knock on wood, everything should go according to plan. And there'll be that presence on the stands every month. Great. Um, and then in terms of, uh, you know, maybe interacting with some of the more, mo you, I mean, it's more modern. So are they going to, is there any chance of interacting with the modern day versions of, you know, the image universe of characters? There's a chance. I mean, you know, success breeds a lot of, uh, has a lot of fathers and, and failure as an orphan. So if the book comes out and, and catches on, I think they'll, there might be some momentum there to kind of expand the parameters a little bit. Cause I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Cause the thing, the cool thing about something like, like Eric's uh, dragon series, he's pretty much kept that in real time. And I consider, you know, like in the blood squad seven universe out there somewhere is Malcolm dragon. You know, if it all works out and, and everybody is, you know, wants to play, we're happy to play, you know, and anything that, Anything that solidifies that that shared universe, I'd, I'd be totally up for. Um, I'm very excited for the, for the. I mean, obviously, I read the first two, but I'm very excited to have it like in my hands, and uh, can't wait to see it. And it drops, I believe, is it May? Yeah, May 24th, I think, is the first issue. Okay, yeah. So everybody that's listening and watching, hit up your shop. Make sure you get that on your pull list. If it's May 24th, that means final order cutoff is coming. I think within a week or two. I think is when your final orders need to be put in. So definitely hit up your shop and get that on your pull list. Cause I, if you're a fan of early image, this is the book for you. If you're a fan of any of Joe's books, um, you know, definitely go pick up this book. The Dutch mini series has been a blast. I love that book. Um, I'm kind of sad. It's only three issues, but um, very excited for, uh, to see what else you got coming out. Is there any other projects, um, you know, that you want to talk about that maybe are, gonna come out i know there's i know you're doing the the zod book the neil before zod book is coming out yeah we just announced i'm doing johnny quest for dynamite oh that's right that's i almost forgot about the johnny quest book that you're doing yeah. how did that come about that was just out of the blue i mean since the last time we talked that 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 happened um matt idelson is an editor of dynamite and i worked with him at marvel way back in the day like mm -hmm. late 90s mm -hmm. and he just he and when they got the license for the Hanna barbera stuff I hit up Nick Barucci right away and was like, I want to write Space Ghost. I can do Space Ghost. Well, they already had some good guys lined up for Space Ghost, but I think that put the bug in Dynamite's ear. And so they hit me up and said, you want to do Johnny Quest? And it took me a little, a few minutes to kind of say, figure out if I had a story for Johnny Quest, because I love the cartoon. Mm -hmm. And I loved the Kamiko comic series from the mid eighties. That William Mester Loves wrote that. Fantastic. Fan, if anybody's never gone and picked it up, that's a, a dollar box dive special. It's great. So once I came up with the story and they approved the story, I was like, oh, this could be fun. And it's been, and it has been fun. Uh, the artist is a, is a great artist named Sebastian Perez. So the book looks amazing. It's got that, you know, Doug Wilde, Alex Toth cartoon feel, but it's updated. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been fun to get the voices of the old cartoons, which are, you know, stylized in their own way, but to, again, apply some real world logic to the whole Johnny Quest concept. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, but it's, it's, you know, it's a fun action book. And I can tell people that we have a story in the free comic book day issue that Dynamite's putting out, which is what I think May 4th this mm -hmm. year. May 4th. Yeah. And then the series starts, I believe, in August. Oh, okay. So it, it's a good, it's a good time. It's a good ride. And is it just a mini series, um, ongoing? What's what's the deal with that so far? Well, I'm writing, including the, um, the not including the free comic book day story. I'm doing five issues. So we'll see. I mean, it, it, I mean, it's I I tend to build these things to last. So whether or not it goes on with or without me, I, who knows? But it, it could go on indefinitely because the concept's strong and the what the, the setup that we're doing could go anywhere. I'm very excited about it. I, I, I can't believe I almost forgot to ask you about it too because I saw the presentation at Comics Pro this year and I was like, oh shit, you know, like that's awesome yeah. because I haven't even thought about Johnny Quest in the longest time. And then I saw you were attached. So the art looks does look amazing. Because yeah. we saw some of the unlettered pages, but yeah, very excited for that. Um, any um, update on a book that I know about that the 
majority of the world doesn't know about? I'm I'm far I'm far away. It's 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 far away still. Okay, all right, but all it's, right. It, but it's happening. There are pages coming in. There's all. I mean, we're we're it's the first issue is done, but that took fifteen months. I but, can't wait for it. I, I hate so that. Well, I hate that I can't talk about it with people. Well, too. was it? Oh, dude, there's another book that's coming up that 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 came up since you and I last talked that I can't talk about yet. That probably will be announced in the next three four months. That is going to fucking, I mean, it's like a fucking explosive grenade. Fucking the last thing you'd expect me to do, and I'm fucking doing it. Is it um, Marvel DC? One of those? It is Marvel. Okay, all right, all right. I'm back. I'm back. It's like I'm back in comics full time. I now. know, man. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like for a minute, I was like, I was like, where's the new Joe Casey joint? Now you got like everything. It's like you're you're everywhere. Your yeah. image, DC, your Marvel, Dynamite. Well, one thing, I mean, just like you were saying, during the pandemic, if anything, I, you know, I rediscovered my love of writing comics and particularly superhero comics. I just jumped back in with both feet. And now I'm now I'm just on fire, it feels like. I mean, every, everything is really cooking. And um, yeah, this 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 other thing that I that I just mentioned, I mean, it's unbelievable that it's happening. Yeah, I, I got to know what it is. Um, Well, I'm here for all of it, dude. I'm very excited. Blood Squad 7, go pick up that fucking book. It is amazing. It is so much fun to read. Go pick up the Dutch issues, too, because I highly recommend those. Johnny Quest, I'm here for. Neil Before Zod is, with Dan McDade has been awesome as well. Oh, so yeah, yeah, everybody go pick that up. Um, And, uh, dude, I know I'm going to want you back on again soon so maybe create your commentary if you'd be down to go through issue one of blood squad seven i've been doing Absolutely, that man. So, so definitely That's hell good. yeah dude we'll do it once that once the physical copy comes out so we can flip through the actual pages but um that that'd be a blast and uh thank you for your time as always man I look always great to, to be here ryan thanks man. Right.